Hi, my name is Elizabeth Henderson and I am in Physics 1 and I attended the lecture called Plastic Pollution in the Ocean, Choose Your Toothpaste. I am reviewing the lecture by Annalisa Bracco, who is a professor in the School of Earth and Atmospheric Sciences at Georgia Tech. So in brief summary, this lecture was about plastic mismanagement around the globe and how plastic pollution in the ocean can negatively affect sea animals and the Earth's natural environment. I learned that more than 300 million tons of plastic are manufactured yearly, and in the U.S., only about 10% of that is recycled. Bracco also explained the difference between coastal and open ocean plastic pollution. Open ocean plastic pollution is about is pollution that's about 500 to 600 miles off the coast, while coastal, coastal pollution is much closer to the coast. Open ocean pollution is measured by a boat that goes in the middle of the ocean with a measuring instrument called a manta trawl net tip. Researchers use what they capture in the net to measure the pollution. One complication with this is that people argue that this is only the pollution on the, on the surface of the water, but as a defense, most plastics float. We were shown some pictures that were quite shocking on the coastlines of Iceland and the Arctic shores. Wind is also a big factor in the ocean pollution equation. Over most of the ocean, the vertically averaged currents near the surface follows from the wind forcing applied to the atmosphere. The zonal wind in most basins, most ocean basins, has similar patterns. This is where most of the physics comes in. The thermodynamic equation, continuity equation, horizontal momentum equation, and vertical equation, vertical momentum equation, are used to calculate the planetary geostrophic equation for the bosonic fluid in the limit of a small Rossby number. This was confusing to me at first, but after she explained it more in depth, I was able to understand it better. There are four possible solutions to help prevent plastic pollution in the ocean. One of them is called nanofragmentation, which is bacteria that eats the plastic and digests it. Doing the cleanup job themselves, doing the cleanup jobs themselves. This is the possible, this is the best of the possible solutions. Another solution is biofueling, but this isn't necessarily good for the environment. Two other solutions are shore deposition and ingestion. Something I didn't know that was very interesting to me um, were some of the major impacts of these, this plastic pollution on sea animals. For instance, did you know that 90% of the species of seabirds have been exposed to plastic? And about 52% of all sea turtles may have ingested plastic debris. We learned that leatherbacks need to get into the open ocean to grow after they are born on a beach. Plastic pollution currently affects this growth process for many other sea animals as well. This was the part that was very interesting to me of the lecture. The most interesting part of the lecture to me was when uh, Bracco discussed microbeads and face washes and toothpaste that affect plastic pollution in the ocean. Microbeads, which is short for microplastic, a particle abrasives are extensively used in products like facial scrubs and toothpaste because they are cheap and not too abrasive. A single product may contain as many as 350,000 polyethylene or polypropylene microbeads. Microbeads enter the environment through sewage overflows or by passing through septic systems. They can pass through sewage treatment plants. This is not safe at all for sea animals or the Earth's environment. So be mindful when buying your toothpaste. After this, I decided to look into some toothpaste that included microbeads and some that did not have microbeads in them. I found that Crest Pro Health Advance and Crest 3D White Arctic Fresh and CVS's Brilliant White toothpaste brands all had microbeads in them. One brand that was sure not to have microbeads in them were, was Arm & Hammer. So if you want to buy some toothpaste without microbeads in them, Arm & Hammer is a good way to go. And you can find more information on their stance about this at their website. 